Hello to all my friends out there. You guys, I forgot my sunglasses. I was trying to be super careful with my sunglasses and I took them out of my purse and, and you know, now I'm having to do my walking with no sunglasses. So uh, this video is about continuous preparing. Okay, here in California, we have the fires and so the lightning was striking and it's not even really um, fire season until September. Okay, during the first fires, the really bad ones, I had my, my trunk part packed with um, evaporated milk because we had a whole bunch of babies in the family at the time and I just thought babies with no milk? No, that can't be. So, if the fires happen down here, and they probably will, I'm preparing for power outages. So if you live in California, you might want to, you know, prepare for that. If the power goes out, you can't get into the grocery stores. And during the first um, fires, there was a liquor store. One person at a time could get in there in the dark, really. And then the other thing you want to prepare for is water. So not if you live in the Gulf of Mexico about right now. This is horrifying. You know, these flood areas, this is like, you know, these, these events never happen. Now they're happening every few years. Same thing with the fires. It may have something to do with our massive uh, populations. I'm not sure. So try to uh, prepare water. And so if worse comes to worse, fill your tubs. I'm going to be buying some of those big plastic uh, trash cans. And if anything happens, I will fill them with water as well. And then you have to know... 16 drops of bleach will um, pretty much purify your water. I mean, it wouldn't be desirable. Another thing is if you have water sources near where you live, like by where I live, we have Lake Murray, which is good because, you know, if the fires are, you know, burning, this area did have some fires pretty close, believe it or not. I wasn't living here at that time. But we have Lake Murray, so, you know, that's good. And in the North, Co North County, you know, up where all the rich people live, not that they didn't get burned out because they did, there are big lakes and stuff up there. Um, you know, and say to yourself, okay, where I could go. Well... Sometimes you not, might not want to go to the mountains here during fires because they're on fire. But if you can get out to the casinos where they have the big, um, big parking areas, if you can get your car out there, you know, before they close the roads down, then you should be pretty safe up there. Also, the Walmarts, you know, are usually pretty safe for parking during uh, disasters. Not entirely. And then, it, and you want to stockpile food. And so one of the most hellacious things I have been doing is packing my food because I am taking my food with me if anything happens. So now, because food is getting very scarce, and if people start, you know, uh, hoarding or running to the stores, it might be a bit very um, hard to get stuff. Another thing is don't be donating all your stuff generously because it looks like we could have a massive population of people really devoid of resources. So, although there are places, see that place? But what you're doing is you're just giving your money to somebody else, but it's not just about the money. Okay, the thrift stores are getting a little bit high, 
and I would rather take my kids' clothes to the swap meet, and then uh, I have the option to sell them very cheap or even give them away. And so, uh, you know, especially things like kids' coats and jeans and, you know, coats for adults. Uh, one time I was out at the swap meet and, you know, people leave stuff and there was this guy and you can never tell about people, you know, by looking at them and he looked pretty scroungy. And so did I. And he said, he picked up this coat and he said, here, take this. It will fit you. And so it was a pretty nice coat, you know. So um, at the swamp meets out here, if they open back up, people leave the stuff and, and you can take it. I usually don't leave my stuff. I usually uh, take everything with me. Also, if you should have to move, what you can do is you can take, you know, move real quick. You can take your clothes straight out of the closet and you can lay them flat just like they were you know hung in the closet and then you can take your um, cheap dollar um, tablecloth and roll them up you know like um, a burrito i usually you know tie knots in the end and you know then it's not too hard to move your clothes and then you don't have a huge packing issue today i got a lot of nice boxes at dollar tree and so when I'm packing my food, I'm packing them in pretty small boxes. And so let's say if I had to evacuate, I would move my boxes very close to the front door in a big pile. That's why it's called a stockpile, you guys. And then I would move it into the trunk or the back of the car. I mean, really, all I would take really is my food and maybe some water depending on the situation and some cash and so you know you might be saying well that's fine for you but i don't have any money and it's likely i'm going to be totally wiped out in these floods in that case what you have to do is you have to rely on God at that point and pray, God, can you send some of those angels to help me? If you live in flood areas, make sure you have vests, you know, life jacket vests for the kids because you never know what kind of thing might happen. And another thing is be determined to know where you're gonna go in in the event of a flood. Okay, if if the place is flooding north of you you can look up the waterways i did that the waterways generally run from north to south so you might be saying well i'll, I'll evacuate uh west or east but those could be flooded from the north as well so you have to give your evacuation plan some thought or like in this case Running towards the um, back country is not safe because they don't have as much uh, fire protection. Also, like out here, I want to say to myself, could my dwelling withstand 12 feet of water in case the dams bro broke? The danger of the fires is there's no brush now in the northern region of california and if they get heavy snow and the snow melts that could cause flooding i mean you can't sit around worry day and sick worry yourself sick but you can keep your car full of gas and be a little bit prepared if needs be so let's say well you don't have any money and so what you want to do is you want to secure safety sooner than later. Don't wait for the very last minute. And another thing is don't assume someone is going to save you. If the, if the problems are, are big enough, there's not going to be anyone. 
Another thing is don't be 100% sure that you're going to be able to get food just because the, the states are hoarding the food. Probably they're hoarding the food uh, because they know trouble is coming. Okay, I saw a good video last night and it says, okay, what we want to do is we want to look to the China model and so say, uh-oh, what's going on with uh, China? Well, what's going on is they're suppressing the severity of the problem, but basically uh, there is a food shortage and all the places that have to depend on them for food are going hungry too. Also, India. I have been worried about India. If you live in India, try to get yourself some food now. It could get a whole lot worse, and I wouldn't doubt it will. But we shouldn't be sitting over here feeling safe and sound either. So what we want to do is say, okay, if I'm totally and completely wiped out, if my whole dwelling is destroyed, maybe I can get out with my car. Maybe all I can get out with is my life. So be thinking about that. Floods, fires, famines, pestilence. Uh, also, I'm not finding the cheap vitamins like I was. You know, I used to get those children's or adult chewable vitamins for a dollar. They don't have those. And you know, um, if you have like food stamps or if you can get to a food pantry, do it now and then save all of your containers and stockpile water in them. Uh, to, I uh, messed up all my scrunchies and I could find them for like five or six dollars. So today I found one for one dollar. So now I have all of one or two scrunchies, which is bad in this hot weather with this hair of mine. Also another thing that is a little bit tough to find is uh, spices. I'm still looking for chives. What is the big damn deal with chives? I can de dehydrate them and I might have to. For some things, you know, you kind of need onions. Well, and I might dehydrate some onions at the same time. So you guys, if you have any good videos, if you have any good advice, can you leave it under comments and I will be back I'm gonna move over here to the shade. Yes, two hours and I just started this. God bless you all.